have to tell you, this is the craziest week and it's probably the most difficult to put together video that I have ever done. Number 1,000, whoever dreamed we'd get here. But here we are this morning, and not without a lot of help from you guys. I tell you, usually I get between 80 and 100 messages and emails per day. This week, this last 10 days actually, has been probably close to double that. What are you going to do for number 1,000 and give me a rash, a huge pile of ideas trying to convince me that that was what we wanted to cover. And you know what? I'm gonna, I took them all into account. And what I really discovered is that we got viewers, we got subscribers from all walks of life, everything from professional gamers to college professors and everything in between. There were lots and lots of ideas. And I've kind of segregated them into categories. And I'm going to give some examples of those. Um, the category we're going to start with is what I call, they're things that are wacky, wacky ideas, but, and they're just not really very sensible. But they're, I get them so frequently, I thought, I'm going to make you guys listen to a couple of them. There's another category called, it's possible, but it's not really practical. Well, we're going to be talking about that too. And there's a bunch of things that falls into that category. And the last is the subject of this video, what I'm calling theoretically, but still doable. And 3D printing today kind of falls into that category. The most frequently asked for video was, is it possible to 3D uh, print keys for locks? In particular, TSA locks. And we're going to take a look at that. When I get done with that, we're going to do the final give, or actually the biggest giveaway I have ever done on this channel. Um, it's my own kit that I put together. And uh, I'll show you the details of that at the very end. But first... Let's go ahead and take a look at some of these wacky ideas to try to end these comments <laughs> once and for all. Let's put them in their grave, guys. Well, guys, the first category I'd like to talk about, as I said, there were like probably 800 messages of ideas. I categorize them in the wacky versus sensible or maybe not so sensible category. And it doesn't matter. This has been going on for years. So that's really why I'm talking about it. Every video I publish, there's some guy whose solution is put C4 on it. And you know, this is probably the same guy. He just keeps changing names, but he, he's so persistent. He could be watching a cooking channel on how to cook an apple pie. And they say, you need to take that and put it in the oven at 450 degrees for one hour. And he'll say an hour, man, that's crazy talk. Put some C4 on it. You can cook it in 8,000 meters per second. That's fast. And, of course, not just C4. You got guys that are talking about TNT. You know, go, go out and get yourself some dynamite. And I have looked, man, the, the explosive aisle on Walmart, they don't have this stuff. It just isn't there. And then the other guys will say, make some ANFO. It's ammonium nitrate and fuel oil. Yeah, make that, and you can blow Fellas, it won't work. I've been working with explosives all of my life. And not only is that very illegal... It's really difficult to do, to get the right mix, to make it safe, to find some way to trigger it. And, you know, uh, the only way to trigger AMFO is a very energetic device, like a, like a uh, blasting cap. And they don't sell those at Walmart either. So please forget trying to use uh, explosives. And Mr. Rocketman, no, I'm not going to ever show how to use a missile or a rocket to blow up a lock. It just doesn't doesn't fit into the what we do here you know what i'm talking about you know the explosives very energetic materials these chemicals they they are unstable they're designed to be unstable and so when we use them to breach a building or when we use them in training you know takes uh there's a lot of effort and a lot of safety because when things go wrong and believe me they do go wrong because these are very unstable chemicals static electricity radio transmitters can set off electric detonators all kinds of stuff that can just go wrong and this young man was about two meters away from a golf ball sized piece of c4 when it detonated and you can see the effects on this poor guy uh, the injuries you see are not fragmentation that's strictly from blast effect that ruptured the surface of his skin uh, these are not tools that we're going to be using on the, in the lock lab to make any videos. So please, enough with the use explosives on it. It'll happen very quickly. Now, I do not so sensible things. You guys know that. And one of the not so sensible things <laughs> is attacking locks with guns. You talked me into that several years ago. Man, that was a lot of fun. Blown apart 
uh, master locks is, is it's a kick one of the biggest kicks you can have with your pants on I get it and so here's what I will do I'll compromise with you guys that want explosives I have a couple of mini guns I will when the weather gets better later this spring you know it's not so cold and, and uh, wet and snowy outside I'll pull one of them out and I'll dust it off we'll take it to the range and we'll attack some master locks with some uh, 7.62 NATO and we're going to hit them at 3,000 rounds per minute. So that is not sensible. It is wacky. So I hope that'll satisfy some of you guys. Well, this next category, I'm going to call it possible uh, versus practical. These are things that are actually possible. Things that often come up, people leave comments, and uh, about 400 requests covered these five different things we're getting ready to talk about. The first, of course... The most popular ever is thermite. Probably seen on TV years ago. Someone used a thimble full of thermite to burn down a metal door or something, something crazy like that. Unfortunately, science and physics aren't quite like uh, television. Yes, thermite's easy to get. We can buy for about $100 enough uh, very fine aluminum powder and iron oxide to make a thermite device. We've got to find some way to initiate it, to light it off. Not so easy to do. You can't do it with matches. Usually it's... Uh, even if you use magnesium, sometimes it can be really difficult to ignite. Once you do get it lit on fire, you can't stop it. It's going to burn uncontrollably. It's going to be splattering molten metal and slag all over the place. And it's going to be at about burning at about 4,000 degrees. It's enough, obviously, to melt metal locks. The trick, of course, is keeping the pooled slag around the lock itself. And the analogy I like you to think about, I mean, if, if you really wanted to do this, you need a very hot pool of slag, and you've got to drop a lock into it. It's just like a stick of frozen butter dropping it into a pot of boiling water. It will melt it, but it's going to take some time. Not really practical, and this really isn't about melting locks. This is about picking locks, guys. Second most popular, liquid nitrogen. Now, <laughs> i got to say, again, this is from probably from television, but... Liquid nitrogen only will work. If you use cast metal, some kind of cheap potted metal, for example, or even cast iron, if the metal has a lot of impurities in it, cheap Chinese manufacturer lock, things like that, indeed, you can dip it in liquid nitrogen, and then you can pull it out and you hit it with a hammer, and it probably will shatter as a result of the internal stresses from those dissimilar metals and contaminants. However, with a high-quality steel, it's just not going to happen. Besides that, liquid nitrogen is really hard to get. Probably got to have a license to get it, which, of course, I don't have. I hurt myself enough without having some kind of liquid that will destroy your skin if you spill it on yourself. It's hard to store. It's hard to carry. We need special, uh, very heavily insulated bottles and flasks. And, of course, it's dangerous. So you're going to need gloves and goggles and all the other stuff. Not really, not really an effective tool to use against locks. Uh, hard to keep it on a door lock, too. Really got to pull it in there. Um, somebody said get a bank of batteries, hook them all up in series, and then you can basically short it out against a lock and burn the sh shackle. Again, I'm not too excited about taking batteries uh, that, of course, release flammable and explosive gases and shorten them out in the lock lab. Um, I'm, I, I'm guaranteed to, you're going to find my body electrocuted, fried, be a husk of black fried flesh i'm not too excited about that so you probably won't see that on the lock lab either another one was of course plasma cutter um this starts to get out there yes of course a plasma cutter will indeed defeat a lot and of course so will a nuclear weapon but plasma cutters they're the ones anyway they're heavy enough to burn through something like a lock they're expensive they're loud they're messy they splash molten metal all over the place you need special stuff like compressed gas to, to blow the molten metal out. Plus, you need power, like 220 or 440 volts. Just not very, not very practical. It's possible, but not practical. And the last one, people want me to get some kind of high-energy laser. Now, supposedly, there's some kind of high-energy blue laser inside of CD-ROMs. Uh, yeah, not powerful enough, guys. You need something a lot more powerful than that to burn through a steel lock. Um, they are the ones that we would need would be of course very expensive they'd be dangerous because after it goes through the lock probably go right through the doors and walls here in the lock lab and hit me or somebody else uh, requires a large power source i only have a 200 amp service in the lock lab and i think according to my calculations again we get to that theoretical stuff but according to my calculations we need about 
uh, between five and 10,000 amps to get enough energy to burn through using a laser or some type of high energy discharge. Just probably not very likely. So those are the things that, yeah, they're probably possible, but uh, unless you want to send me a plasma cutter or laser, which we know obviously will, will get through blocks very easily, it's probably just not going to ever show up in one of my videos. Sorry, guys. So for you 800 people that suggested those things, I hate to disappoint you guys, but I'm just not going to be able to do those. Let's get on to what we can do, though. Well, guys, before we get in the meat of the subject, trying to decide whether or not making 3D printed TSA keys are really practical, let's talk a little bit about the history of this. Why? How did we get here? Um, it all started a couple of years ago at Dulles Airport when the Washington Post was interviewing a TSA agent about these locks. What happens once our bags are checked and TSA needs to get into our baggage? And he gave a little tour, and at the culmination of that tour, he reaches in his pocket and he pulls out some TSA keys. They're shaped exactly like this one. And he kind of fanned them out like a deck of cards, and the photographer took a high-resolution photograph. Of course, as soon as that hit the street, they realized they'd screwed up. They took it off the Internet, but once on the Internet, always on the Internet. And a bunch of guys found it. The guys that found it, uh, we're familiar with. We know at least one of them is uh, Dark Sim 905 About a year ago, he sent a lock to the lock lab. It was the one that had the magnetic key pins and driver pins, the one I wasn't ever able to even get a false set on great great lock anyway dark sim 905 johnny christmas and night owl uh, got together and deciphered those pictures and decoded using the picture they decoded all the locks the first seven uh, of the keys uh, they actually made a presentation at hope 11 which is a hackers convention last summer showing how exactly they did all the research and all of that so anyway a tremendous security breach that all started because one TSA guard was dumb enough to show his keys. Um, when we 3D print these, after they digitized them, decoded and everything, they did some testing. Uh, when we 3D print these, they look very good. I have a brand new extruder that I just installed two weeks ago and calibrated, so they came out looking really good. I managed to buy most of the TSA locks, at least a good representative sample. The keys are numbered, as you see we have a 1 and then it's 1 through 7, and they provide them to us in two different styles. We have the typical, the one that's designed to look exactly like the TSA, and they got one here, they call this the stubby. Much smaller, easier to put on a key ring and carry around in your pocket, I guess. I do not have a TSA lock number one. I went to every travel place within probably 40 miles of where I live. Couldn't find it, but I did get a good sample. The first one starts with number two. And of the samples that I have, all the keyways are a little bit different. They're all clearly marked with which TSA key is required. So I printed a standard TSA. And when we slide this dude in there, this one works. And the way this will work is when the key turns, if we can get this one to cooperate, that black sleeve will rotate and allow us to slide that out, the shackle out of the way. So the orange one is a little bit iffy. I gotta say, it does work. You guys kinda gotta jiggle it a little bit. If we can get it to cooperate here. And if not, I'll just go to the number two stubby because he's much more reliable. I don't know why that would be, um, but it just, for some reason, seems to have worked out. When we print these keys, let me get to jiggle in here while I talk. When we print these keys, um, some of them need to be cleaned up a little bit. There's some plastic flashing, and it's not absolutely perfect, but they do normally work faster than what's happening here. Come on. Let me turn them over and try the other side. Get in there. Get in. You have to be kind of careful. These are made from either PLA plastic or they're made from ABS, which is, there we go, which is the same material that they make Lego from. So when it's, when it comes out of the extruder, obviously, and it, it goes back without any trouble at all. So there you go. It does work. Yeah, so you guys got to jiggle. Anyway, when it comes out of the extruder, it's molten plastic, obviously. So sometimes I think maybe uh, it doesn't come out exactly the way these guys drew them. And a perfect example is the number three. This is a number three that's, for the most part, unmodified. Let me show you what the keyway looks like. Kind of an odd keyway. Go on, camera. 
there we go kind of triangular shaped uh, the key when it comes out is actually wider at the bottom and I suppose that's to give it some support um, when it goes in there let me show you the key first this is an unmodified one you have to thin this out I used a razor knife to thin this down enough so it would fit into the keyway uh, this one does go in there you can see the part of the weakness is here um, this one does not go in the keyway yet. I tried, it doesn't quite go in there. So I thinned it down to almost dangerously thin, as you can see there. Only was it when I was able to get there, will it barely fit in the keyway? I'm gonna try to do it without breaking this. I've broken several. And even then, after thinning it, it is so tight that the key won't even, I mean, you can put quite a bit of pressure on that. Uh, it's just not gonna come out. This one has worked for me I think once or twice at the most, but it's not going to work. It takes a lot of jiggling. I think this key is just, we've reached the limits of the material we're trying to make the keys out of. I think that's what it boils down to. So number three will not work. I suspect normal keys, like nice and thick one, like number one and number two, they work because they're easy to form. But when we start getting very thin material like that, uh, I can't imagine that will work. Number four, I don't have a number four lock, but when you take a look at the shape of these, I mean, these are the number four is so simple. I just can't imagine that this would not possibly work maybe a little filing to get it in there but it will work number five i do have it this is a kind of a new breed uh, most of them before now are combination and then the tsa goes in with a key this one doesn't have any combination it only comes with a key i bought this at a outdoor store when you take a look at this it's a little bit tight come on baby focus for me focus there we go that piece of warding right there proved to be pretty problematic on a metal key, it's easy to put a groove on the bottom for that warding to slide into, and obviously the key's gonna work. When we take number five, we can print a 3D key, but that groove is not so easy. So when you print the groove on the bottom, it doesn't quite work, it doesn't quite fit in there, because on the drawing, I think that groove on the back side is just not quite in the right spot. So the only solution was to take that key and file off the bottom. I used a razor knife to kind of shorten it. So now I can kind of bypass that warding. It does go in there and I have gotten an open and I've also broken several of these. You can see they have a very low cut right there in the center and that gives us, just like the number three key, a very weak point right where my thumbnail is. So I'm very hesitant to even try to force this in there this time. I've just got a feeling that it's just not gonna work. I have gotten it in there, and I did get an open, but get it, I've also broken too many of them. I'm afraid that's gonna happen right now. Maybe a shot of WD-40 would do it, but more often than not, I think you're gonna break that key. It's just too thin. The material just doesn't stand up to it. Um, number six, I do not have one of these, but these are little bitty dimple locks. You know, it's like half the size, and at first I thought I'd use the wrong scale, but this is the exact scale. I printed several. And this is how they're intended to look. It is a tiny little dimple keyway. And it would probably work if you thinned it out a little bit on the bottom. Uh, you'll notice that on 3D printers, uh, they only print plus or minus 0.1 millimeter. You notice on the top where it finishes, there's kind of a rough texture. On the bottom where it's on the print bed, it's on glass. So you get a perfect uh, smooth finish because that squashes that molten plastic down really nicely, like a mirror finish. So consequently, uh, one side is rough. You have to get a little sandpaper and thin it so it'll fit into the keyway. I'll bet number six would work. Number seven is another one of them. This is a key that is completely unmodified. I have not done anything to this. And it, uh, when they come out, I've trimmed the support off of the back. When they come out, it does fit. Let's see if I can grab this guy. This is a number seven. So number seven is kind of a Z shape, if you notice, and it's wafers, and you've only got wafers on one side. This has cuts on both sides, so it doesn't matter which way you slide it in, it will still work. It's got identical cuts. It will not fit uh, unless you do the mod that I talked about, smoothing it out to get it narrow enough. And I've done it on this one. This one does work. It does slide in. And when you jiggle around, again, doesn't work first time, first try every time but it does work and it's going to turn oddly counterclockwise. 
maybe. I'm going to try not to break it because it also has uh, two weak points, two low cuts. Come on. Camera shy. There we go. It does turn. We got to unlock and then you pull it out of that side. Now let me go ahead and lock that one back. And the way it nor normally works is the when the combination is unlocked, if we, we dial in and this one is 723, then it will unlock from that side. So like most of these, TSA controls one side, we control the other. Let me go ahead and put that back in there. And we kind of screwed on that one, but I think I can show you. Uh, I bought another lock. This also is one of the newer ones. This is uh, also by Master Lock, just like this older combination one. Uh, it also has a TSA 7. But when you look at 7 and you compare the key that came with it, you notice it's a one-sided key, not a double-sided key. And the keyhole is supposed to be Z-shaped, like that one, but this one is shaped more like a normal key. Yet, it will still open. Now, this is kind of weird because I can't believe they would make a mistake like this, but I, clearly they did. This is the original key. It will not go into the Z shape because they've included that extra part near the bottom. So they gave me two of these keys and I took another one. And let me show you the original against that one. All I did, if I get the camera to focus, is file off the bottom of that. So now I've got a wafer, half of the wafer lock. And so I took that and once I got it to fit inside of there, like that, you know that's going to work, right? Because it went to that. But then I noticed that the pinning was a little different. So I looked at the pinning in the center pin there. Actually, it's number three. I compared it to the number seven that was in the kit. And all I had to do was file down one set or one position. And now I can take the key that came with that, put it into any master lock, and now it will open. Now I can lock that bad boy back if I want to. And there we're done. So I've basically made a TSA key out of the key they gave us by modifying a single position. I can't believe that they all they've done is they've master keyed all of these TSA locks. So if you buy the if you buy the commercial lock, you can pretty much modify it to fit these TSA locks. Why? It's like they're piling their mistakes one on top of the other. A series of mistakes. I can't believe it. Anyway, there you go. It is possible to make 3D printed keys, but is it likely because of the material constraints that we're working with? I do not have a metal 3D printer. They are available. I don't have anywhere near that kind of money. But to, to think that somebody would go to all the trouble to try to make TSA keys out of using the 3D printer, I think on a few of them it'll work, but on most of them probably will not. The other reason, this is an awful lot of trouble for a thief. All they really need to do I mean, there's really nothing to these. You get a pair of pliers, you put it on the, on the uh, shackle like that, and I mean, literally, oops, fell out. Literally, it's nothing to getting uh, getting through these things. They're so easy and so delicate. That's a lot less trouble than making a bunch of 3D keys. I can't believe a criminal will go to that level of difficulty. Anyway, fellas, there you go. I appreciate your time. By the way, let's talk about winning some stuff. You've endured an awful lot about 3D printed keys. So it's only right we come up with a decent giveaway. 1,000 videos ago, I was sitting in a tiny little uh, hotel room in Ecuador making my first video using a Gen 1 iPad. And my first five or six were silent videos, like almost like old-time movies by today's standards. Anyway, 1,000 videos deserve something special, guys. And this is it. I actually bought this uh, about a year and a half ago from Peterson. It's a brand new... Well, uh, two years old, I've never used it, and I've made several improvements. Originally, this was what Peterson called his G3 kit. He's changed the composition slightly over the last year and a half or so, but I've added a lot of stuff to this. You get all the G3 stuff, I think, plus I've added in here the, the I-Core uh, picks or tensioners for the best padlock and arrows uh, to pick those. You've got some wafer and some shutter lock tensioners here. I added a set of the sidewinders, uh, extractors. These things are just great. And I also, in the, since Peterson introduced this kit, he also introduced three of the 18,000th bogey set. I bought, there's all three of them right there. So this is the kit that you will win. It's only right. We have a special occasion. This is probably the biggest and most valuable giveaway that I've had. 
But I wish I could do them all the time, but a thousand videos, uh, it's a special occasion, guys. You want to win? I got a special button on the website. That's the website. Go there. In the middle of the page is a big button. It's kind of silver gray, and it says 1,000 video giveaway. Click on that. Leave your email address, and if you win by next Saturday, I will email you and uh, let you know. Anyway, fellas, best of luck, and uh, hopefully we get another 1,000 videos out of this. Thanks, guys. Stay safe. Stay legal.